how do you find that jewel in the rough? And I'm, I'm trying to find it myself, you know, but I think it, that's what's fun about all this. And I was trying to think, you know, when, when an artist passes away their art, their paintings, typically appreciates in value. And, uh, you know, a side note is the most prestigious place for you to have your painting is going to be at the Vatican. And if you didn't know that, it's not a museum, it's at the Vatican. So does a coin's value increase if the designer of that coin passes away? Or uh, does, does it matter who owns that piece? There's a prince, a king, that owns this large collection and then he goes and sells and you are owning a coin that that uh, uh, some prestigious person in another country owned. You know, does that increase its value? Or, or will that increase the whole series? All the coins that that, that person owned uh, these are trying some things that I'm thinking about and trying to say to myself, hey, what what area could I potentially really cherry pick and maybe maybe jump on before everybody else does? And I have to tell you, there's not much out there that hasn't been searched through. Unsearched roles on eBay, get real. No way. I mean that 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 is not going to happen. But, um, you know, I was thinking, is it is it going to be, maybe, maybe it's going to be this CAC sticker craze where, you know, it's hard to find prices on shield nickel, on a shield nickel from 1883 proof with a CAC sticker on it. You know, is... is is somebody going to buy a bunch of these and then submit them for stickers and then watch these sticker prices rise? You know, that, that could be a potential area. Um, and, and I did a video about the CAC sticker, and they have a website, a web page, where they list the coins that they accept. And uh, that might be something to consider. Something else I was thinking of is... Maybe some of this modern stuff, which I'm not too crazy about. But yes, there's a lot of nice stuff out there. Find, uh, I'd have to do some research, but I'd have to find a, a designer or engraver or an artist that's making some nice stuff. Uh, and they'd have to be making nice stuff for the U.S. Uh, foreign coins, foreign coins, there's just not that much of a demand. Maybe it's building, but, you know, look at Canada. Canada, they have coins with mintages a fraction, a fraction of, of U.S. coinage. And you'd think they'd be worth five, six times more. They're not. There's just not a lot of demand. you got to remember about the demand. If there's no demand, it, it, it's worth only what somebody's willing to pay for it. Nobody wants to buy it. It's worth zero. You know, there has to be a demand. So I'm looking U.S., I'm looking modern, I'm looking for a, a, a good designer that uh, has designed some nice stuff. And uh, am I looking for somebody that owns, you know, like my, my example with a painting at the Vatican. If, uh, if this artist by the name of JB has a painting in the Vatican, now the rest of his stuff might be might be starting to gain some value. Uh, but but does that happen with coins? If a prince from the Middle East owns a certain coin, does that now increase the value of, of all those same coins? I don't know. Maybe, maybe. But my, my hunt, my search right now is going to be uh, modern, beautiful design, U.S., see what I can find. And uh, yeah, there might be some good winners there. But here's another thing to consider. Some of these old-time designers, you know, like like Barber, 
Uh, what was Barber's first name here? I wrote it down. Pardon me for one second. Barber, Barber, Barber. Charles Barber. He, he designed the V-Nickel, a Stella gold coin, the Isabella commemorative quarter, uh, and, and a lot of other commemoratives. Gold, silver commemoratives. His stuff is gorgeous, gorgeous, highly collectible. And and think about think about this one, VDB Victor David Brenner, and his design of the Lincoln, the obverse is still used today. They've changed that reverse design. Uh, they had a they had you know the log splitter and everything in two thousand nine and and the new shield reverse that's used in 2018 and you know is that obverse if the obverse is discontinued will the Lincoln pennies now gain steam I don't think so I, I my opinion is no will the 1976 bicentennial quarter the the standard issue quarter start increasing in value no way no way Okay, it's got to be something U.S., low mintage, beautiful design. They didn't make a lot of them. It's hard to find. There's a, there's a good demand for it. And that's the thing with the commemoratives. There's a strong demand, the silver commemoratives. They update their price guides weekly. Same thing with the Morgans and the Peace Dollars. There's a strong demand. The price guides are updated weekly. So you can stay fresh on what's going on out there. If, uh, you know, and believe it or not, right now I'm seeing a resurgence of some of the bust coins, the bust halves and the bust quarters. I don't know if you guys are seeing that where you live, but in the Cleveland area, there's there seems to be a little bit of a, of a demand for that nowadays. Um... But I don't know. What do you think? What's a diamond in the rough? And, you know, hey, is this video going to be seen by millions of people? No. Uh, just give me your opinion. What do you think is a good good area to collect? And maybe we can share some uh, some sales that are out there. You know, everybody's sharing the, the eBay sale and look what they got. You know, let's share some numismatic stuff uh, and, and let's try to help each other out. That's what... Garfield Heights Coin Club is here for. Thanks for watching. Post your comments below. What is a diamond in the rough or what you think might be in the uncharted territory? Thanks for watching.